Hey guys, how's it going? Josh here from Polymathics, and today I want to talk about one of my favorite games of all time, um, Jedi Knight. And um, it had several different renditions. There was Jedi Knight, Jedi Knight 2, which was Jedi Outcasts, and then um, Jedi Knight Academy. But uh, it follows, for those of you that don't know, it follows uh, the main protagonist, which is Kyle Katarn. And in the first one, it even had uh, like a an addition to it where you could be Mara Jade, which was really cool. But um, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because, um, well, several reasons. But that story, in the way the levels progressed, particularly the thing I'm talking about right now is Jedi Knight Two, Jedi Outcast. Um, it was really great from a storyteller's perspective, but moreover, it what it reflected was a really great way in which you yourself can develop skills, right? If you, for those of you that have played, which I'm assuming a lot of you have because you probably saw the title and were like, oh, hey, Jedi Knight Outcast. Um, but when you first start out, Kyle Katarn has kind of like he hasn't given up his Jedi uh, moves but he's he's like not really trying to do the Jedi thing right now so all he can do is use his blaster you know and <clears throat> at first he has a very basic blaster and so he gradually like progresses and in the first um, stage or level like all you're doing is learning you know how to interact with your environment and how to use very basic weapons and very very basic uh, moves and then um, and then as it progresses then you end up going to the Jedi Knight Academy where Luke is training other uh, like the new Jedi Knight order uh, you know the children that came after um, they Luke and Han and Leia saved everybody from the Empire and um, and so Kyle goes there and he's kind of like, hey, you know, I need to get my lightsaber back. And Luke is like, well, before I give it back to you, you know, let me give you the, the basic tests of a Jedi Knight to prove that you're worthy of getting your lightsaber back. And so, you know, I don't remember them all because it's been a long time, but he like he has to relearn how to do force push. And, or force push and then he has to relearn how to do force pull and um, force speed and then <clears throat> eventually he's able to get his lightsaber using like all three in combination and then um, and so what was really great about the game was the pacing right and the reason why I'm bringing it up is because so many times we aspire to be Jedi Knight status or Jedi Master status in whatever field that we want to go into. But what we fail to do is take the appropriate steps to acclimate to that position. And a lot of times what that means is learning very basic skills. If you don't know the fundamentals and you can't really progress to, uh, to, a, higher, to a higher level of knowledge and ability. Um, one of the great quotes that I recently heard in a podcast from Tim Ferriss, the author of The 4-Hour Workweek and The 4-Hour Chef and The 4-Hour Body, um, he said, um, you know, a master chef has to know how to boil an egg, has to know how to cook an egg. If not, then they can't be a master chef. And the same thing goes for us, right? We have to first learn how to interact with people in our environment and then we have to learn um, the basic skills required in order to wield whatever tools that we need um, to, to get us to the status that we want. And then once we get to that status, we have to continue to, to evolve and develop those skills um, to mastery. And so, just like in the game, even once he gets his lightsaber, there are so many different levels um, and other abilities that he can learn, both light side and dark side. I'm not going to go into them all, even though I really want to. Um, the point is, um, 
even when he was able to get that, like he still hadn't achieved mastery. He still had to go through all of these different challenges and obstacles um, and learn new skills before he could achieve quote unquote mastery and then end up fighting the uh, the end boss. But um, one for those of you who have never played it, it I would say even to this day it's like one of the one of the best games and it's super fun. But um, two is try to take try to take uh, you know a pointers from that from that lesson. You know, pace yourself. Try to think about, so here are the actionable items. Try to think about what you're doing, what, what position you're aiming for now, what goal it is, what outcome you're looking for. And instead of trying to just cannonball in and jump right into the pool, try to um, identify like what are the things that you need? What kind of environment are you going to interact in? What kind of people are you going to deal with? Once you've identified that, you've kind of got a feel for how you're going to do, you know, do the communication, then also think to yourself, okay, um, you know, what are the major skills that I need in order to operate in this environment with these people? And then what are the major tools that I need to get? Far too often what we see is whether they're an entrepreneur or someone who's trying to make a big impression, uh, they go out and buy all this ridiculous stuff that they either don't know how to use or don't need yet before they've cultivated the the character and the skills that are needed to wield such crazy weapons um, you know weapons um, so um, with that being said just try to think about today what are those things try to identify those things knowledge is power and like G.I. Joe told us a long time ago knowing is half the battle so go into the battle prepared be ready to fight properly by identifying you know, what the skills are that you need and what is a natural progression that you can have to get to where you're going. Um, okay, so uh, hopefully this video has been informative. And if so, please catch me in some of my other, some of the other topics that we cover. And until next time, take it easy.